your life. <laughs> so for us, the, the first step in this whole process of changing the way we um, learn in our classroom was about identifying major concepts in chemistry and then in math that could really be engaged with through a project. And being very strategic about that and picking core content that's in integral to the discipline, pun intended, um, <laughs> but then phrase a question around it that is sufficiently open-ended that the students have the ability to choose what they want to do, but as a teacher you know there's no way that they could frame something around that idea without engaging with the core content that you want them to encounter. So for example, for this project, the requirements were um, that the students design something that's in terms of electrical energy portable, sustainable, and meets a need. And those were the instructions we gave them, but we knew ahead of time, based upon the math and the chemistry of batteries, that in order to do that successfully, students were gonna have to wrestle with logarithms and the yin to the yang of exponentials and logistic curves. And then for the chemistry, there was no way they could do it without engaging with uh, the fundamentals of circuits and oxidation and reduction reactions to explain how a battery works. And then the students got to choose what they wanted to do within that, which is a challenge for us as a teacher. Yeah, I mean, you, what you really have to do is make sure that there's enough time that you give students in order to do this kind of work. Because if you don't create the time and space for them to get their hands dirty, to start putting their touch on it, to make these battery packs or decide that they want to you know, cook things with solar panels, um, then you're never going to get the kind of creativity and the excitement and stuff that we see out of our kids. So. I think that as teachers we need to let go a little bit and, and make sure that we can create that time in our schedules and I think that you need the, you know, the support of other educators in the school. So the administrators, the program support uh, people, the people who kind of can look at the schedule and look at the content and say where are some of the places where there's overlap with other courses, where are some of the places where we don't need to go into as much detail that we can then create more time for students to do projects. Because if you think that you can do this kind of project work and watch kids get really, really excited and still follow a day-to-day -day pacing chart that you usually have in a math and a science class, you're never gonna get the kind of outputs that we're seeing with our students. And so that, I think, in order to make this you know, personalized for them, in order for them to really get excited about it, you have to give them the time and the space for that. And in a math and a science class, that comes at the expense of some of the, some of the content. But I think if we still expose our students to the, the big concepts and the big ideas that they hit a lot of those things anyway. So. And I think for both teachers and students it's really about this idea of productive failure because that's what prototyping is both for a teacher as you design a lesson and for a student as they try to build something this battery pack is the sixth iteration of an idea and they've learned a ton in trying to do it. They've learned 3D printing, they've learned the chemistry of batteries, they've learned circuits, series and parallel and by the way how to do soldering just to make this prototype, which they're still not 100% sure is going to work. But they've learned a lot in the course of doing it, and they're excited about it, even though they know that ultimately this might not work, they're still excited about it. 